Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Sorry we're filming in here, the lighting outside is horrible, but I've really wanted to talk about this fragrance for a while and I thought right now would be a perfect time to review it for you guys. It's on the very special fragrance from Antonia's Flowers and it's Tiempe Passate. I'm really excited to bring this for you, not too many people talk about it, and it definitely deserves a lot more love and praise than it gets. So let's get into the review. Two things. <laughs> Firstly, the only other person I've seen on YouTube talk about this fragrance was Fragrancy Block. So, I mean, it really gets like no love that I've seen. If I am incorrect and other people have reviewed this or talked about it, please link it below so that other people can check them out, whether it's a good or bad review. Definitely think this fragrance deserves more attention. And also, you guys, one of you actually asked for a review of this fragrance on the day that this was scheduled to be delivered to my house. And I thought that was so ironic. Now I did order this recently or it did come into my possession recently, but I have worn it in the past. Um, and it was about four or five years ago. It was right before I got married. Um, I had smelled somebody in a shop that wore it. I absolutely loved it. And I was like, where, what are you wearing? I need to get that in my, I need that in my life. And they were like, oh, it's this fragrance. Um, they wrote it down for me, I think, of the shop uh, keep or the uh, person who was working behind the cashier counter kind of like gave her like a slip of paper. They wrote it down. I immediately went home and ordered a decant and I've just loved it. Ran out of it a few years ago, but it was right before I got married. I got really distracted. And then recently it just kind of popped into my head as something I needed to find again. I just kind of reminded myself. So I got a bottle of it, really super duper and excited to wear it. So let's talk about this fragrance. I have found that people who wear this fragrance are freakishly obsessed with this fragrance. They have like an emotional ties to it and they're very protective of it and I can completely see why. The notes aren't going to be anything crazy spectacular, but actually when I talk about how the fragrance uh, develops on your skin and just generally the overall feeling that this fragrance gives me, maybe you might understand a little bit more. The notes of this fragrance are clementine and bergamot. You also have cedarwood, rose, musk, and amber in here. So the notes in this are going to be clementine, bergamot. You also have cedar, other woodsy notes, amber, and rose in this fragrance. So it doesn't sound like, why do people care about this? Why does no one talk about it? It sounds like something would be really nice. It depends on like how the fragrance is put together. You could have a lot of the same ingredients, but it also depends on how they're compiled and put together. Now, I'm gonna describe this fragrance in ways that you might think are negative, but I'm gonna tell you that they're very positive. It's a very mature, old, and very dated fragrance. Um, it's very unisex. What I mean by that is there's nothing about it that's too sweet that would pull it more feminine and nothing about it that's almost too spiced or overtly woozy that would pull it more towards on the masculine side. It's pretty much perfectly balanced fragrance. What I mean by dated and old is that it kind of reminds me of a snapshot of like old Hollywood, like old glamour. A lot of people kind of describe Nightingale from zoologists like that. This kind of fits that bill too. It reminds me of a beautiful woman or man, whoever you are, dressed to the nines, going out on the town, going to one of those like crazy like nightclubs where there's a long waiting list and there's a giant clam and there's a jazz singer and just one of the two people eating dinner together. It can be a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. It kind of reminds me of that. And that's what I mean by like old, like old world. Not so much old in a negative connotation. I don't even like using old as negative. To me, the only thing that should be used negative as old is when it comes down to like milk or anything else. I feel like it's more experience under its belt. There we go, more experience. But when it comes to like fragrance, it's almost like a fine wine. Like when you find fragrances that are a little bit old or even a little bit dated, if they're mixed properly and they would be beautiful then, they're still beautiful now. And that's what I like about this. It reminds me of fragrance. You would take a time machine, go back maybe like 60 years, grab a fragrance off of some Hollywood stars like vanity and come back and that's what it reminds me of. It's beautiful then, it's most definitely beautiful now. 
So that's my special th thoughts about this fragrance. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why people don't so much gravitate towards fragrances like, fragrances like this now. People are looking for things that are more conceptual. People are looking for things that are a little bit more exciting. People are looking for things that are a little bit more familiar. Um, and I feel like the glamour then is different than the glamour now. The glamour now is very sophisticated and somewhat provocative. But back then it was a little bit more velvet and where today it's a little bit more like chiffon. Uh, this is a very rich, I don't know if that's the right word, I don't know if chiffon's the right word, uh, but to me this is very rich, it's very heavy, um, but there's something with great clarity in this fragrance. I love the fact that it opens bright with a lot of citrus in it, but it's not a bright fragrance, it's a very crisp citrus with just the right amount of sweetness. I think you have very much to thank the pairing of the bergamot and the clementine with this. I feel like if it was lemon or orange or grapefruit, I feel like those two, which is a mix of sweet and almost creamy, kind of balance each other out and you're left with this beautiful crispness with just a slight sweetness underneath, which works really well with the amber, the cedar wood, the other woodsy notes, and most definitely the rose. Now the two notes you think would be the most predominant in this fragrance, which are the rose and the amber, are actually the ones that I don't get much of any like you really don't get them they're in the background this is to me more of a really citrusy heavy on the cedarwood fragrance but that amber gives it a nice bit of warmth and rounds everything out and the rose gives it just this little touch of floral that just makes it very elegant and sophisticated overall i think this is a ridiculously well balanced fragrances with notes that you see just about anywhere but it comes to create comes together to create something really unique and special Longevity on this fragrance is really nice. I get about 8 to 12 hours and initially in the opening of the fragrance in the very beginning of the dry down you're going to get a lot more of the clementine and the bergamot. Now this does last a very long time in my skin and for the most part the citrus is there for the entire lifespan of this fragrance. Closer to the end of the fragrance, maybe around the 8 hour mark, is when the clementine starts to go away. But the bergamot seems to sit there the entire time and plays really nicely with the cedar, the amber, and the rose. Now, I don't have any issues with the sillage with this. I actually think this has beautiful projection. It does project about arm's length, maybe even a little bit farther, depending on where you wear it, how you apply your perfumes, your body chemistry, and your environment. But because this is one of those fragrances that is, although very beautiful and sophisticated, it might not be too easy to understand, and it might be dated to just the amount that somebody who doesn't like fragrances it might bother their nose. So I wouldn't recommend this in a work environment in a place where maybe they can't get away with you or it would be uh, get away from you. Maybe it would be a problem. Maybe they get headaches. Maybe they're like they're coughing or sneezing. Definitely wear this one in not professional settings. However, if you are going to an interview and you want to make an impression, especially if you're going to be interviewing for maybe a career type job and not so much kind of like a uh, here today gone tomorrow type job. I think this might make a really great impression. It's definitely not something everybody wears. It's something very sophisticated and it's also really beautiful. So I do think this is something you could definitely wear to an interview. I think this fragrance to me, kind of like the environment or the story I told you, I think this fragrance would be beautiful going out to dinner, especially if you're going out to dinner on a first date or for a special occasion. There's just something really sophisticated and classy about this fragrance. You could have a glass of bourbon or a glass of wine, or if you don't drink, maybe you're having just some sparkling water. You're having great conversation. It's a really nice restaurant, and this would really set the mood for a really glamorous night. I also think this would be really sexy to bring back after dinner for dessert, if you know what I mean. There's just something kind of carnal about the um, background of this fragrance that I really kind of really dig. And that kind of goes back to it being like mature and sexy and old. It kind of reminds you of those like really like sexy uh, men and women um, back in the long time in the old movies. And there's just something really attractive about that. And I really think that this fragrance just encaptures or encapsulates all of that. Now I know I'm sitting here and I'm talking about like old Hollywood and sexy fragrances and wear this out to dinner. But this is also a really great day-to-day -day fragrance as well. 
even though it is on the heavier side and I do find it lends itself better for the evenings, it does actually work really nice during the daytime, probably more towards autumn and winter because it's a little bit on the heavier side, but I have been known to wear it in the summertime because that citrus is so bright and it is so very much apparent, it does work in heat and humidity as well. So you can pretty much wear this anywhere, anytime. I might just stay away from it for um, professional settings. But overall, I think it's great and I definitely think it deserves a lot more love and attention that it gets. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any experience with this fragrance, good or bad, or any other fragrance from Antonia's Flowers, please let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to know what you guys think. And as always, guys, if you like these reviews and these fragrance videos, remember to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also, don't forget to subscribe because it's free. And I'm free. I put out new videos every Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends as well. So always have something free to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time. Bye!